Hey everybody and welcome back to Split Couch Games, I'm Scott and it's been a little while since my last Gears Tip video. Sorry about that. But with Rank Season 3 about to begin, I figured now is a good time to start these videos back up. I'll talk more about that at the end of the video, but right now let's hop into some Escalation Tips. So this first clip doesn't have any audio, which I'm sorry about, but there's so much important stuff packed into this that I needed to show it. So. Bear with me and the rest of the clips will have the audio in them. So we finished off a Swarm player at the very beginning turning a 3v2 into a 3v1. In these cases you want to make sure that you keep your distance so that you don't die to the one guy because this should be an easy one for nothing kill. He should not be able to get anything from this fight. After I finish off that kill, I immediately book it towards their home hill knowing that we have numbers advantages on the map and I want to start applying pressure. As far as I know, we don't have any one of them pushing our home hill, so there's no reason to go defend that right now. As I'm running towards the enemy home hill, I am scanning that ledge there to see if there are any enemies. I see only one, so I know that I'm about to head into a 1v1 that he's probably not expecting because he's not looking at me. He's looking to try to kill the player that he's chasing. So as you can see, I'm about to make a mistake. I can't see behind that cover at all. I thought I was going to have a little bit better angle at it. I didn't. So I end up sliding into that cover and I'm really lucky that he didn't move a little bit faster and get around that corner. I realized my mistake at about halfway through the slide. So I know that at the end, I'm going to have to do what's called a back A, where you pull off the cover and pull the trigger as you go back. I tend to pop shot as well. So I pull the left trigger at the same time and I get a pretty easy shot. So right here I pull up my TACCOM because in Escalation it tells you how many people are alive or dead on the enemy team, which is super important. The guy in the middle is the one that I just killed with the back A. The second one on the left is the Cantus that I killed back at the beginning of the clip. And one of the other guys that is alive is the one that died at the beginning of the clip, so I know that he's coming out of spawn. When I checked the TACCOM, I somehow missed that the Locust was standing literally right there and would have been an easy kill, but we're going to ignore that for now. So I immediately get into the hill to start decapping it. Once it's decapped, after three seconds, they won't be getting any points in the round and they'll be under a lot of pressure. So I turn around just to double check what's happening behind me. I see that I have two teammates and I don't see the Cantus that I didn't see before. So I assume that we are looking pretty good there. Now this is probably the single most important tip I can give you for escalation. If you have multiple people capturing the enemy home hill, all but one of you should position yourself between their spawn and the hill. It takes three seconds to cap a hill regardless of how many people are in it. But if an enemy touches it before the cap completes, the timer is reset. This gives the opponent opportunities to come back in the round. If you can avoid that by forcing them to fight you outside the hill, that's a big bonus for your team. In this instance, it looks like he's probably not close enough to get to the hill anyway, but notice how he has to stand up and start fighting me instead of being able to run directly past me into the hill. So in this instance, I'm not trying to go for a kill. If he kills me and then is able to run into the hill, again, the cap gets reset. And also notice that our home hill is actually being decapped right now, giving them even more time to make a play on their home hill. So if I'm just wasting their time, then it gives our home hill players a chance to finish their kills and get the hill back for ourselves. The key on any push on the enemy home hill is to not die. If you die, then you give them a chance to really take back map control. So it's just important to live long enough to make something happen. The idea of this clip is similar to the last one, except for we already have the home hill captured, we're just waiting for the B hill cap to come through. Right here, my teammate makes a big mistake. He ends up getting into one shot range and ends up dying really quickly, leaving me in a 1v1 when we had a 2v1 advantage. So right now I'm just keeping my eyes on their spawn just to make sure that I see everyone that's coming out of there. I end up seeing the Cantus, so I'm getting ready to fight him. I would rather fight him with right hand advantage, so I want to position myself to kind of force him over into that direction. Uh, I end up getting a nice clean shot to start things off on him, and I also should have tried to uh, land a spot 
as well. Um, spotting him would have allowed me to see exactly where he was at any given moment for a good couple seconds, but I ended up not being able to do that, but it was okay. Again, I set myself up so I'm looking at spawn and I see this guy coming out. And again, I'm trying to force him off to the right. I don't see anyone coming out of spawn immediately, so I pick up some ammo when I have a moment to breathe. And while I'm doing that, I check behind me to make sure that no one's flanking me. That's going to do it for the tutorial portion of this video. I'm trying to keep these new episodes to around 5 minutes, mostly for my sanity. These can take a while to find clips that fit together into a theme, record the voice, add the annotations, etc. To make this easier on myself, I'm only using clips that I record off of Xbox Live. It's much easier to manage that rather than recording hours of gameplay and then searching for some key moments. If the quality is noticeably lower for you, let me know and I'll consider going back to the old method. I'm just trying this out to see what it looks like. And I'm going to try and get at least two of these out every month, maybe more, maybe less depending on how busy I am. But let me know if there's something in particular that you want covered. And with that, I'll see you next time on Split Couch Games.